How are you both doing? Good. We're good. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Um, I like throwing a curveball at the beginning. If you could get the financing to make anything you want, what would you make and why? Oh, wow. (laughs) Um, You know what? Um, There's I I grew up with British uh, children's literature. I didn't grow up with uh, Marvel or DC so much. And there's a British author called Raymond Briggs who uh, wrote amazing graphic novels. One of them is called Fungus the Bogeyman. I would love to make an animated version of that. Super weird, but awesome. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I guess for me, it's just uh, telling, even though having like such a big budget, it would be just to tell like a Afro-Latino story and be able to set it in somewhere out in uh, the Caribbean. So that to me would be awesome. I like both of these ideas. Um, (laughs) uh, Animation, obviously technology is a huge part of making any animated movie. What... um, I guess my question is, what? how has technology the last few years or just recently helped to tell this story? Well, it's uh, enabled us to make a movie during a global pandemic, <laughs> for one. Um, we did not know when we started telling this story about tech uh, that it was actually going to start to become even more relevant uh, the more we made it. We were actually terrified that our story was going to get out of date. Uh, because animation takes so long to make, right? So uh, we were wondering, maybe in three years' time, you know, social networks will look different. But in actual fact, I think, especially through the pandemic uh, and spending more time online, this kind of question of what does it, how does it affect us has become even more kind of relevant. Completely. Um, one of the things that... Uh, um, did you? I, I like talking about other possible titles. So, Ron's gone wrong. Did you have another idea that almost became the title? Um, we we had lots of arguments about the title for sure. Um, it was a hard <laughs> one to figure out. <laughs> Ron's gone wrong was one that uh, Disney loved. In fact, we were just we were thinking about calling it just Ron or Ron with the with a zero. Um, uh th- we have we have a very feisty creative team so plenty of arguments but it always kind of had ron in the name so that's where we started yeah. uh animated movies change a lot during development i've spoken to so many directors who've talked about how radically it can shift i'm curious with this from when you first started to what people see on screen did this how radical of a change did this movie go through or was it pretty much what you guys envisioned when you first started it was pretty much what um, was pitched a, a, a while back. And and that's one of the things that it was just always attractive because it had such a genuine and heart story mm-hmm. with a lot of comedy and it just worked. So a lot of it was just trying to be honest and, and con- continually have that connection of what the core idea, what we believed in for the story mm-hmm. to be. Uh, Easter eggs. I'm sure you planted a few. Um, do you want to... Or maybe you didn't. Uh, Are there Easter eggs that fans should be looking out for? Well, there's a lot of bots that have some really cool skins that we've dotted around. Uh, So uh, some amazing Marvel characters, um, some Star Wars characters in there. Uh, My personal favorite is a tribute to a certain post-apocalyptic anime movie. (laughs) So so fans can take a look, uh, see if they can find that. Well, that, that actually is my a follow up that I had, which is, was it tough to actually get Star Wars and some of these other things? Or once uh, Fox joined Disney, it was like, yeah, whatever you want to do. Well, uh, yeah. oh, yeah, sorry. Go no, ahead. no, it's OK. Uh, I think for us it was like trying to see because we had so many different kids with so many different ideas and um, and just, you know, likes of what they would want and personalize the bots with the skins. Um, we were hoping, and I, again, it was about story mm-hmm. and trying to get it, you know, to uh, and to convince them it wasn't that much to convince because of what we were trying to do. Yeah, I mean, um, once we were in Disney's hands, it was really about um, them getting to know our movie uh, and then getting to love it and then giving permission for, for us to have those characters, which was uh, we're really grateful. It was awesome to be able to do that. Yeah, I can only imagine what it was like getting that email or call uh, when you're allowed when you find out you're allowed to use Star Wars and other things. Yeah, oh yeah, awesome. and once we had those stormtrooper <laughs> yeah. bots in a line, yeah. we were like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> we did it!" <laughs> no, it's, it's it's that's great. Um, the movie, one of the things I think the film does very well is that many things, but the movie deals with like how what kids are going through in the social media age. 
And can you sort of talk about that? Because it's really impacting everyone across the entire globe. Yeah, I think the 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 most pertinent thing is that it's really potentially putting more pressure on the way we see ourselves, right? Because it's kind of like the, the, there's all these metrics about how many people follow you, how many people like you. Uh, and uh, that's one thing that I think, especially as parents, we're really thinking a lot about, right? Like, what's it like for our children growing up with all this extra pressure? We didn't have that. And yet we still had issues with insecurity, with loneliness, or with feeling like we can't find our tribe. All right. And uh, that is what we wanted to personify in our main character, Barney. He already feels that, but even more so now because all these B-bots are in the world kind of advertising everyone's coolness and popularity. And all he wants is a, a B-bot to help him. And he's going to get a broken one. So now, great, he's <laughs> he's this outsider kid with a dysfunctional robot. Uh, and that's kind of like the comedy starting point that we wanted to explore, you know, this sense of it's okay to have a relationship that is based on messiness. It's a two-way street. It's about knowing the things that you wouldn't share online, but are things that are real about you, things that you're you're scared about and insecure about. That's actually what makes a real uh, thriving friendship. One of the other things about this film is that it doesn't make the, listen, technology is not going away. And the fact is that if somebody invented a B-Bot, it, it's never going to, I mean, that's just too much money on the line. And it doesn't, I like how the film doesn't just pretend they're all going to go away and, you know, everything's going to go back to the way it was. Uh, can yeah. you sort of talk about that? The technology is here to stay good or bad. Yes. And that's something, I mean, it's a great point. That's one of the things that we we wanted to embrace uh, the technology and not criticize it being bad or good. It's just a sense of like, how do we continue to be connected um, as just as human beings making being um, what's a true friendship and that idea of that, of what it takes to be stay connected. Yeah, we, I, we know that, you know, no one's no one's getting rid of their phones. No. <laughs> <laughs> so in our story, we had to kind of find a way to like, OK, how can Ron influence it all uh, in a completely brand new way? Yet they still get the experience of, of being connected with new people with their B-Bots. Uh, one of the things that must be tough for animation is to uh, are jokes. I've spoken to other directors about this because you insert a joke, then you're watching it about a thousand times. It's yeah. no longer funny. And how can you sort of talk about the fact that, well, how tough it is to do jokes in animation and make sh and, and not take them out because you think they're no longer funny? It's really hard because we're in a five year timeline <laughs> sometimes making this movie. Um, you know, there is like the universal uh, sense that a joke is landing <laughs> because it's almost like a drumbeat, like the rhythm is hitting. Uh, there's a lot of visual comedy in this uh, in this movie, and it's so much about sound design and rhythm and placement of specific ideas. Uh, but as you say, we can get super blind to whether they're funny or not. And that to that end, we have to screen it and get honest feedback. Uh, and uh, if the feedback's good, it stays in. Uh, this was Locksmith Animation's, I believe, first feature film. Uh, I, um, so can you sort of talk about the fact that it is their first feature? What did you enjoy about working with them? What'd you learn? Yeah, I, uh, this is our first feature, but we had such an amazing talent that we brought together. And that is, again, for, you know, Julie, um, Sarah and Liz, bringing all this great talent um, was just so fortunate for us starting out. Mm -hmm. um, and having this experience of working with um, all these amazing artists and collaboration from animation to layout to editorial, um, we were just in a good spot to be able to explore things in, mm -hmm. within our story and in, in the film. Yeah, the animation look oh sorry no i was gonna say it's super exciting to work at a startup again you know uh we came you know we worked at pixar together and it was an invaluable experience but there's something really special about trying to trying to hit the same storytelling peaks but doing it um with a startup um and in the uk there's such a, an amazing talent base as well so it's it's personally really exciting for for that to be happening right here I thought the animation looked really cool. Um, I got to stop. Thank you guys okay. so much for your time. Hope the film's a huge hit. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.